Well, Sudzers, we made it to the end of 2021. And I think this has been the longest uh, year of my life. I I frequently call 2021 the longest century ever because it has really felt that long and it's been wild. And it's like shocking to believe that like the insurrection happened this year, almost a full year ago at this point, because it feels like it happened decades ago. That's just how long it's all been. And it's been nuts. And one of the best parts in the way that I have been able to get through all of this without losing my mind really is uh, you guys. So thank you. On New Year's Eve, I am glad to be spending a little bit of time with you to thank you. I mean, I do that every day, but I really am grateful. You guys are awesome. And I hope that I was able to keep you somewhat sane or entertained or distracted uh, while all the other shit was happening, you know, around us the world over. So there's that. I'm not like, I don't know, making a New Year's Eve soap tonight. I'm actually really not. It's weird. I probably should be because I sent 2020 off with, um, a New Year's Eve soap and it was the, you remember the bar with all the different colored fingers, FU 2020. Kind of feel like I set myself up for an even worse 2021 doing that though. So I'm not poking that bear this year. We are not starting the year out with some sort of dumpster fire, whatever. We're not doing that. So that's not what we're doing today. I will tell you what we are doing in just a minute. Whew, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 212 of 365 days of soap. It's New Year's Eve, and today we are making a cocoa butter recipe soap, following up with yesterday's cocoa butter deep dive. So it all kind of makes sense. Now, I've been talking about 100% anything soaps over the last two years on the channel and how I don't really think it's a good idea except in very specific circumstances. However, I have been talking about specifically that for literally years in all of my master classes and it never freaking fails. After I had this big conversation about why it's important to balance a batch, then I set, you know, the, the soap makers out to formulate their recipe and I start, you know, checking them before they start soaping with it. And there's at least one person who has made a 100% something soap. And I'm like, okay, I feel like you, you, you weren't listening. And so it's something that needs to be repeated over and over again. Also, because we get into these deep dives and we start talking about the fatty acid chains and all the jazz with that, it makes sense to go ahead and show you and give you a visual as to what that means realistically in practice in a soap recipe. What is the lather like? How about the bar hard and all of the things? And so that's what we are doing today. It is a 100% cocoa butter soap with a recipe and a test, a lather test and all of the things. So let's get to the video. It's gonna be a short one because these are easy, easy recipes to formulate and to make and test and everything. But you know, let's go there anyway. 
Okay, okay, okay. So today is the cocoa butter recipe day. 100% cocoa butter soap recipe. And that's what we're working with. And that's also the uh, recipe. There you go. 5% super fat on this guy. No water discount. Water discount is, or water is about 2.4 times lie. As you could see there. One, two, ish. Yeah. For sure. Now, remember from yesterday's video when we were talking about the fatty acid profiles of cocoa butter, it's like, what, 35% stearic and 25% palmitic and oleic, respectively. And then just the rest is such a low percentage that, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. So we're going to expect a really creamy bar of soap, a very creamy lather. And to that, I wanted to sort of counterbalance that by by infusing the lye solution with some soap nuts. So that's what I did, which is why I got the, you know, the, the little sieve thing out. And I don't know that we actually used a strong enough solution of soap nuts with this. As you can see, no solid nuts came out of the lye container with that. And the reason for that is these soap nuts have been used for, I don't know, two or three batches so far. So they're almost just pieces and sort of at the end of the line. I think if I had used new soap nuts, it would probably help the lather out a bit more. But I'm curious anyway to see. I'm not going to do any other additives outside of that though, because with these 100% oil or butter soap recipes, I like to keep everything sort of stable as far as the recipe goes so we can actually just inspect and investigate what a soap looks like at 100% without putting in too many additives to increase or, you know, help something. And also, as someone pointed out in the Great Bubble Chase, people aren't always going for big bubbles. And that's true. If you don't want a big bubble, you don't have to have one. And also what someone pointed out was bubble does not equal getting clean. And that's also true. I mean, there is an entire world of like face oils, like oil cleansers out there to remove your makeup and to do whatever for a reason. Those things don't bubble, but that's a different conversation entirely. And I guess maybe that should be in the next fault, like deep dive thing that we do is uh, how to you know, convince your target market that bubbles do not always equal clean. That's hard. That's a hard thing, changing a customer's, you know, mindset. Also, this soap taking forever to trace, forever to hit an emulsion. This was really a very long time for this. And I was really actually very surprised by that. Okay, now on to the pour of this, and it's going to be a very quick and easy pour as you would probably expect, because not a lot actually goes into the making of this. We're not inserting any scent or any colors or any anything. And we are going to pour into silicone molds. As you can see, I have a feeling this is going to set up very, very quickly, but I am going to wait a couple days before actually testing the lather on this to give it a couple days to, you know, finish its saponification and do the thing thing and give us a rough idea of what the lather will ultimately be later on down the line. Granted, the longer it sits and hardens, the better the lather can become in some cases. I don't think based on the fatty acid profile of cocoa butter that that's going to be the case, but you know, whatever. Okay, and on to the cut slash removal from the container. And as I said, I let these set for a couple days and the pattern on that is absolutely beautiful. It really, like nothing stuck to the mold itself, but there are a lot of air pockets in that from, which is very, very interesting. And yeah, very hard bar, incredibly hard bar of soap. Lots of air pockets going on in that, but you could see all the air pockets that I had in the batter itself, just by nature of trying to get it to an emulsion. So I guess that makes sense. And I did not tap the mold down, but my assumption is tapping the mold down would probably work very well. And you could eliminate some of those air bubbles. Also, it's kind of a cool texture in that anyway, though. It's kind of fun. Now, I am going to test these 
And I think I'm also going to test the palm bar because I imagine this is going to be very similar to the palm bar in terms of lather. And yeah, I'm not wrong. It's a very scant lather. It's very delightful on the skin though. It does not feel at all slimy like a an olive oil soap does, much like the palm. And so I do wanna go ahead and also test the palm that has admittedly been sitting around for a little bit longer. So, you know, there's that. But that lather is has not changed much. You can actually go back to the palm oil deep dive and the palm oil vid, which we did a long time ago at this point. Lather is still really delightful, actually. I quite enjoy that lather. That is something that I have been using on my face and like it a lot. So there is a 100% cocoa butter soap recipe, and I would actually honestly prefer this over an olive oil soap if not for the cost of cocoa butter. And there it is, a 100% cocoa butter recipe soap and a lather test to go along with it. Now, as we talked about during the Great Bubble Chase, one of the reasons why these butter um, soaps are not lathering at all is because, well, what I told you about during the Great Bubble Chase. The more butters you put into a recipe, the sadder the lather is going to get. Now, I could have put sugars and done some stuff into all of this and, you know, increased the lather and done the things, but I'm having more fun not. And just showing you this is your baseline. This is what you can expect from a 100% dot, dot, dot recipe. And who knows, maybe you like it. Maybe you want that to be something in your line. And if so, make the thing, do it, whatever. You wanna increase the bubbles on this? Let's go aloe vera and some sugar. And you could do so. In all honesty though, the price of cocoa butter and how unbalanced cocoa butter is in general, I don't really see a huge benefit to doing a 100% cocoa butter soap in a line, not really. But you know, you might like it. So if you do, go do the thing, that's excellent. For me, I have done this thing today and uh, our New Year's Eve festivities await. We actually do have some traditions when it comes to New Year's Eve and it's all around Taylor Swift and watching the Reputation Tour. So that particular tradition isn't that old, but also neither are my kids. So it all works out. But yeah, so I'm going to head out. I hope you Sudsers have had an amazing time today. Again, a big, big thank you to each and every one of you for existing in my 2021 and keeping me sane and grounded and giving me a distraction because every once in a while we do need to tune out from all the crazy around us and just find something that helps us heal. And you guys have done that for me throughout all of 2021. I hope I've been able to do that for you too. So as I said, I'm out of here for today, but I will see you all again tomorrow in 2022, a brand new year. I am not going to say a word about how it's going to be the best year yet because, um, nope. But I will see you all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.